Good morning. Can you hear me? Good. Um, my talk today is on the Pentacom, obviously, and um, I will go through our clinical features and the reason why we have used basically the Pentacom as our current device um, for the corneal topography or interior segment imaging of the cornea. Um, so we have to start with the topic of shine fluke imaging because Pentacom is a shine fluke imaging device. Uh, we had started re years ago, 10 years ago, with the OpScan system, which is also a, Penta is a, also a shine fluke system. Um, and currently on the market, there are others like the Sirius, there's the Galilei, and we are working with the Pentacam at the moment. Now let's look into the topic of a, of a shine fluke system. Uh, what you get when you take this evaluation with shine fluke, you get an interior segment imaging. You can see that sometimes the angle structures are not well defined, um, but basically what you can see already here is iris, cornea, lens, and let's look how that works. Basically you have a camera, the camera is moving around the eye, takes different slits, and the different slits then finally are imaged into a, a picture. So Scheinflug imaging principle, the entire interior segment from cornea front to the posterior of the crystal lens is taken. Then the reference point of the image is the apex of the cornea. It's important. It's a rotating scanning device which measures the center of the cornea accurately, which is not true for the Placido systems. The entire cornea is being measured from limbus to limbus, also an advantage compared to topographers because topographers don't go from limbus to limbus. They basically, you know, when you have these devices, you see a five millimeter, six millimeter, but you don't go from limbus to limbus. That's done in the Scheinflug imaging principles. The eye movement are detected by a pupil camera and corrected via software. So there is a little movement and this is corrected during the procedure. And then, as we have imaged the anterior segment, there is a 3D model uh, of the anterior segment, which is calculated by ray tracing, so the optical distortion is considered and compensated for. Now, here is the Pentacam. As you can see, the device. Let's go to the features. It's a 3D anterior segment analyzer. It's number one. It has pachymetry data. I think it's very important just as you work in your practice and you don't have to have a pachymetry anymore because it's in the system, you can forget the other devices doing this. It's taking topography, anterior and posterior measurements of the cornea. It's taking the elevation data map, also anterior and posterior. It takes tomography and then, as I said, a 3D analysis of the lens because we can go deeper. As you can see here on that picture, you see here the, uh, basically the, the, the structure. So here is the, um, the lens or the cataract formation. Then a 3D IOL simulation age prediction, which is important for phacic IOLs. Um, then on, based on all these measurements which are taken here, um, the company has worked with different uh, opinion leaders, Berlin and Ambrosio. They have done an enhanced ectasia profile, which you can use for detecting uh, early keratoconus in your patients. There is the holiday report for IOL calculation, and then there is corneal wavefront measurements also on top of this. Maybe more to come. Uh, that's, of course, a decision of the company. Um, I would like to give you a little bit um, overview of our clinical and scientific focus with the device over the last two to three years, what we have actually done. So let's start with cataract. In cataract, we looked at topography, IOL calculation, toric implants, densiometry, position of the intraocular lens. If you want to take a picture, wait, because this file has an... You, you can go ahead, but it takes another four, four pictures here. Refractive. We do topography, ectasia, keratoconus screening, and phacic IOL simulation. In cornea, we have the ectasia, keratoconus screening, as I pointed out in refractive, both uh, important for both. Um, Cross-linking and intracorneal ring segments, as you can see here in this slide. And then for accommodation and presbyopia, we have this tool of densiometry. And I would like to go with you to a couple of uh, studies we have done. I think they're quite interesting uh, if you look at them. So an excerpt of this, uh, one focus on precision of the device. When you have refractive surgery, refractive determination, 
you want to know the repeatability of white-to-white -white measurements and keratectasia uh, detection. In cataract, densiometry of the natural lens is important, repeatability of keratoconus measurements, and astigmatic limberil, so astigmatic surgery, AK LRIs, we use it for femtosecond laser surgery determination. For the cornea, repeatability of corneal wavefront, reconstruction of keratoconus screening, and early detection of keratoconus. So this is, a, I think, a huge area, re refractive, cataract, and cornea, where actually this, this device is very, very useful. As I pointed out, we have changed from a placido system for our main screening to do this now. And I come to this at the end of my talk, which are our maps which we like to use. Let's start with a phakic IOL diagnostic with Pentacam. Topography is used in, very, in, in every phakic IOL case which I do in the clinic, but I want to have more uh, information. For example, irregular astigmatism, and therefore optical tomography of the interior segment, for example, by Scheimfluke, uh, offers additional information. Central anterior chamber depths, peripheral anterior chamber depths, central and periphery perchymetry, and then simulation of a phakic eye well position, as you can see here out, for example, with an artisan phakic eye simulation. When I look back to the subspecialty day and we looked at the phakic eye well talks, we came to the conclusion that nowadays when you want to do a phakic eye well, you have to have an information about the interior chamber. Not only centrally, you need to know how the angle structures are. Because if the angle structures are too narrow, then there is a contraindication for phakic IOLs, for example, for phakic anterior chamber IOLs. So it's important to have that information. Post-optive positional stability evaluation, you can see here one of our cases with the cachet implanted in the eye. Additionally, adding white to white completes the phakic IOL diagnostics because we need that, for example, for posterior chamber lenses, ICL um, implantation. The background, therefore, sizing of interior chamber angle supported phakic IO depends on interior chamber angle diameter, AD I call it here, and clinical practice corneal diameter is used to represent the interior chamber depth. So different devices seem to give different results, you know, all know this, and therefore we, we evaluated this in a um, study. We did a prospective evaluation of the repeatability and reproducibility of corneal diameter, white-to-white -white measurements, as well as the applicability of those values in predicting the interior chamber angle diameter. Um, in our trial, we used um, different devices on the market, the IOL Master 500 by Carl Zeiss, Lenstar 900 by Hagstreit, and then the Pentacam uh, HR from Oculus, as we are here uh, presenting the data. As control, we looked at the Visanta, which is an anterior chamber OCT, also from Carl Zeiss Medic Tech, and actually this giving different results. In these three devices, you have white-to-white -white and anterior chamber depths, and the control you have anterior, uh, angle, di angle diameters and anterior chamber diameters construction, as you can see here. So all kind of subjects with healthy eyes were taken in this study. We had 44 eyes of 44 patients, 33 male, female, uh, average age was 36 years of age. We have two independent measurements for reliability and repeatability done uh, to determine this in our study. And then we have a comparison to the control with validity and precision. And finally, one, only one observer disregarding the objectivity actually looked in this uh, device here. We did a statistical analysis in this prospective uh, case number calculation with a Shapiro-Wilk test. We did blunt altman analysis. This is a, a statistical analysis, what you do when you want to compare devices and want to show the precision of devices, because with blunt altman you can have mean and uh, differences, and you have a coefficient of repeatability, which actually demonstrates if you take measurement A, and measurement B, how close the measurements are. So in other words, if we do our topography day by day, you want to take from the same patient a topography measurement, which is basically the same when you take it seriously, or you know, one after each other, one minute after the other one to do that. 
You can have particularly problems with tear film, but uh, Scheinflug systems are less dependent on tear film evaluation, and therefore this is a good thing. Repeatability white to white. Number one is here, you can already see the Pentacom white to white measurement one versus two shows you a much better correlation than the IOL master white to white. You can see here the spread is larger. That's important. And then the repeatability of AD um, is actually showing and demonstrating the OCT horizontal uh, angle diameter, angle to angle. Sorry, one of the couple of words are in German because we have done the statistical analysis in German and it's sometimes a little bit tedious to translate all the uh, calculations, but I translate this to you and you see here the mean and you see the difference in this device. Now this is the, the outcome of the study and this demonstrates a lot of numbers, but basically you look at the relative correlation. If the number is very low, then you have a very good correlation for your device. If you look at the white-to-white -white measurements, for the IOL Master, for Lenstar, and for the Pentacam, you can see that the best correlation was actually found in white-to-white -white measurements for the Pentacam measurement. If you look now at the Visante OCT, and then you look at ACD measurements for the other devices, you can see that there again, and you can see that Pentacam again has a very good um, repeatability uh, in this screen here. A little bit only better by Lenstar, but much worse in the IOL Master and even in the Visante. So here's the comparabil comparability of white to white versus AD and tear chamber depth uh, diameter. And you can see that in this regard, we found that the IOL master actually demonstrates a better result. So in discussion and conclusion of this study, the Pentacom demonstrate the best repeatability for us to white to white. So if I have to determine now a fake IOL, for example, an ICL, I take this measurement because this gives me the better, best repeatability and I use this for my calculation. The IOL master had the best comparability between white to white and AD compared to the Visante, which is one OCT measurement. And then the automated measurements are superior and the impact has to be determined in a clinical study. But that is the outcome for us. So just to say that repeatability white to white has been best for us with the Pentacam. Um, you can see this here again, and of course the clinical impact, for example, if I have phakic eye wells and tear chamber depths, posterior chamber depths, I want to know this and I want to have a good repeatability of my devices. The second topic is cataract, maybe presbyopia, maybe accommodation. So what normally is done in all the studies worldwide, currently for taking densiometry of the natural lens, is taken by a subjective cataract staging system. You all have seen that in publications, the lock system. The lock system is here on the right side and tomorrow maybe objective staging is possible. We already have published just two days ago an article in AJO and I want to come to that uh, paper in a minute. So our trial was again a prospective evaluation, intra-observer reliability, two times three measurements were taken and a comparison of the two means were done. And actually we did this for densiometry of the natural lens. Inclusion criteria were patients between 18 and 63 years with a dilated pupil. So this was our cohort, I, can ho I hope you can see that. Group one was eight, 18 to 40 years, group two was 40 to 60, and group three was 60 to 85. So we had actually different groups, no cataract, but different density in the nucleus because we are changing during life. Exclusion were ocular trauma or surgery, blurred or ir irregular cornea, method, two times three measurements as are pointed out. In between, we repositioned the head and then we did a repeat measurement. Um, quality specification, as you can see here, is determined in this. And we took for the right eye the 90 to 270 slit at 270 slit and the left either 270 to 90 slit, which is important for that measurement. This paper has been accepted for publication. It's coming out pretty soon um, and in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. So the analysis modes are here the different ones which actually are provided by the Pentacom. One is a linear mode, the second one is a peak mode, and the third one is a three-dimensional mode. And you look at the results, 
you can again look at the correlation factor and as I pointed out, the lower the number, the better correlation and you see easily that with the 3D measurement we found the best correlation for our measurements to again determine this by Altman device, blunt Altman devices. So you can see here the 3D mode just to get an impression on Blunt Altman, you see the, the tighter the, the, the scattergram, the better repeatability is usually. So for the discussion, in conclusion, good repeatability was demonstrated by 3D, better than 2D, and 2D was better than the peak mode here from the company. Uh, we had a high tolerance, however, and an increased scatter resulted in decreased repeatability. With other words, the higher the cataract formation is, the less the repeatability will be. Problems, 2D and 3D areas of interest. I come to that in, in just a minute. When you want to determine here, um, let's say in a prospective study, you want to determine densiometry of the nucleus, then you have to decide which area you take, right? Because as you can see in all Scheinflug devices, you have here an area which the Scheinflug devices do not detect, and that is closer to the periphery in comparison to the OCTs. And you can see that here. So in the future, um, 3D, 3D area of interest, I come in a minute what we have done. I think then maybe lens tilt we have to look at, reflection artifacts, and posterior capsule is sometimes difficult to determine because you cannot go so far. So this is an, inst uh, an interesting study also for the company. We just have published that two days ago in AJO. And what we have done here is, the purpose of the study was actually to look at FACO time um, of a femtosecond laser device versus phaco emulsification. We wanted to find out is there a reduction in phaco time if you use a femtosecond laser. The outcome of the paper is actually we found a reduction by two-thirds when we used a femtosecond laser in comparison to infinity. I did all the surgery and we had an independent researcher who actually was looking at the data. But how did he do that? He basically did the following. He, we took the measurement, the OCT intraoperatively of the femtosecond laser device, which gives you an area of interest, and we took this same, this same cube and laid it over into the Pentacam measurement. So we took Pentacam of all the devices, and then we had Pentacam measurements of the femtosecond laser cases versus the ultrasound cases, and had the same cube, and then we could compare the grading. So the grading is important because in the grading we found even a more pronounced effect of the femtosecond laser. You see when the density of a lens is very low then you don't have much phaco power because with phaco you just suck it out and with femto. But the more dense a nucleus becomes the more significant actually is the reduction in phaco time. And this could only be detected because we had the pentacum and take that densiometry. And you can also see here the phaco time and the relative densiometry also shows you the same. You see here the lines definitely difference it, not significant, but you can see here the, the lines uh, as it turned out in the scattergram for this particular uh, procedure. Coming to another topic, repeatability of corneal wavefront reconstruction is a topic of interest uh, of our group also, corneal aberrations optical effect of corneal surface calculation by ray tracing which is based on the corneal elevation data and what we found is actually that the corneal wavefront analysis gives us a repeatable description of corneal surface characteristics and with this we have determined a sensitive method to differentiate between normal eyes and eyes with subclinical keratoconus which is very important. Of course, if you have easy detection of keratoconus, easy to see. But we're working on the early detection of keratoconus, and we try to get this into the repeatability of corneal wavefront reconstruction with the device. And so one of my uh, co-workers, or one of my faculty people, Jens Buren, is working in this regard. There is a new Pentacam feature, so far I have understood. There's normal wavefront data as you can see here, which is, goes to the posterior surface on, and the cornea surface and gives the new um, feature to come is normal data comparison to a normal, I think, uh, age-related uh, matched um, group of patients. Our standard map for refractive surgery contains this anterior curvature, posterior evaluation and ectasia screening, screening. So this is the map I like to use the most. Because what you see here, I have to go back, what you see here is number one, you have here the sagittal um, keratometry data. 
you have cornea thickness, pachymetry measurement, and then you have the height data. You have Ambrosio's measurement here, and you have different other devices. So in other words, anterior curvature, posterior elevation, and ectasia screening is what we use for refractive data. Let me go a little bit further for keratometry with the Pentacam and toric IOLs. Toric IOLs, as you all know, we have a real astigmatic component on the cornea, and we want to match a toric lens. Now, for us, it was important that ray tracing, anterior corneal surface, posterior corneal surface is actually taken. And you have maybe heard at previous talks that posterior corneal astigmatism is currently looked at because we think that not only anterior curvature but also posterior curvature has actually something to do. And this is my good friend and mentor actually Doug Koch in Houston they worked on this. They just published this in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery 2013 and you looked here uh, basically what, what they found is that the posterior curvature has some impact uh, if you look at the interior, the SIM case, the total corneal power and you can see that the interior and the posterior come close to the corneal total power, so you have to have some information about the posterior surface. Uh, if you look this over age, what you can see that here, the corneal astigmatism, if you look at the anterior part, in red we have eyes with steep meridian vertically, and you can see that this is decreasing over the years when we become older, and we increasing actually the eyes of steep meridian horizontally, whereas the oblique more or less maintain the same in the anterior. If you look at the posterior uh, astigmatism, you can see there is a slight reduction and there's a little increase of the oblique ones and a little, little increase only of the uh, eyes which meridian horizontally. So posterior is a little bit more stable. However, you can see that the decrease here uh, at the end of this uh, file between 80 and 89 years. So the corneal astigmatism in age has, I think, something to do. And this, I think, is a very interesting slide. What you can see here is uh, Da Koch and his group, they analyzed age, anterior cornea, and the axis. And what you can see is that the anterior axis is basically going 92 degrees down to 118, 172, and basically in the horizontal meridian. That's, I think, is very important, whereas, uh, in, and, and also the numbers you can see here, whereas the posterior cornea pretty much stays the same with 90 degrees. So it's an interesting finding. Resulting error, estimating corneal astigmatism by anterior surface only, mean 0.2 diopters, 5% maybe le less, le more than 0.5 diopters, and the impact on toric eye wells might be there, and sometimes we cannot explain our results. The error, 2.1% more than 0.5 diopters error, Dr. Koch's group found, and 17.2% more than 10%, a 10 degree error. But rare, or rare, but of relevance, we have to determine this in clinical studies. Our current trial with the Pentacam is to evaluate the repeatability of corneal astigmatism measurements. This is again going to the anterior part. And what we did is we looked at different devices, the IOL master, the LENSTAR, a manual keratometer, two placido disc systems, the Keraton Sprout, the Atlas, and the Pentacam as a Scheinflug topographer. Um, you can see here the manufacturers, so a variety of measurements were done. Again, a prospective randomized study, 45 eyes of 44 pa 45 patients, inclusion criteria older than 18, informed consent, and corneal trauma pathology or surgery was actually not allowed. Two full standard measurements at each device were taken. Manifest refraction was taken, visual acuity, and the order of the measurement of eyes was actually randomized. So we had six measurements, but we randomized this in order to look at this. The analysis, we looked at anterior surface astigmatism and con uh, to total corneal astigmatism using ray tracing calculations from the Pentacam measurements of anterior and posterior corneal curvature and pachymetry and analysis diameter ranging from one to eight millimeters in a one millimeter step um, system. Again, blunt altman analysis of repeatability. What did we find? You can see here, these are the different devices going from left to right Atlas, Model G, the Keratometer, IOL Master, Lens, Dust Scout, and Pentacam. And you can see here the numbers. This was actually 
determined with manifest refraction, uh, cylinder, standard deviation, maximum and minimum. And you can see here what actually our outcome was. Example, just because this was a um, very intense uh, calculation, I want to show here again a correlation. And you can see that the relative correlation again in this device for astigmatic component was better in the Pentacam than in the IOL Master, for example. And looking at this device again, we pointed this out here. Um, let me show this. In the middle, the best correlation was found with the Pentacam. And you can see that also when we looked at the different millimeters of diopters, one, two, three, you can see that there is a variety. But basically, the Delta K Pentacam measurement gave us the best measurement, as you can see here, close to the Atlas uh, device uh, in this regard. So in conclusion, Scheinflug images derive values show best repeatability. Manual keratometers performed worst. In the rate evaluated, no influence of value of astigmatism on correlation was actually found. And the Scheinflug tomographer offers more data combined with more reliable measurements. For cataract procedure, I come to the conclusion, our standard map is actually a total corner refractive power. Baseline for all toric IOL calculations or for femtosecond laser treatments where we now treat the astigmatic, astigmatic components with limbal approach of the incision or with astigmatic approach. So therefore, we're actually using this. And again, here I'm showing you this map, the total corneal refractive power map, uh, keratometry, co uh, total corneal power map, and then the height, uh, the corneal thickness measurement, and also including the 3D simulation of the uh, entire chamber. Uh, you can see here again the K1, K2 simulated and the average for the astigmatic component, which is uh, important for these measurements. So in conclusion, impact on clinic practice with a Pentacam. I have a useful tool for FACIC IOL all in one device. We use densiometry for cataract grading. I showed you a study which we recently pointed out. We also might be going in the direction of accommodation presbyopia with the device. Then keratoconus screening with corneal higher order aberration and spatial thickness profile, uh, BAD display and vertical interior surface coma. And then for eyewell calculation and keratometry, we have the total corneal refractive power. And so it becomes a very useful tool for our clinic to determine anterior segment um, measurements for calculation and for selecting cataract and refractive patients. Thank you very much.